Hey, what's up guys? It's Mario back again with another trade video. Uh, today I'm going to go over a day trade, high probability day trade that I did today on Disney stock. Uh, last week on Saturday, or I believe, no, excuse me, it was on Friday, I did post a video on Disney and why I believe Disney is going to be the next $1 trillion company. Uh, if you are interested, I will have a little link pop up right here in, in a couple seconds uh, where you have a link to look at that video. Uh, but overall, because of uh, Friday's uh, huge move on Disney, uh, there, is an there was an opportunity for a great uh, easy day trade or more like a high probability day trade on the long side uh, on Disney. So I'm going to go over that trade, uh, day trade, and kind of explain everything about it, how I work, where I got in, where I exited, uh, those type of things. Uh, so hey, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to this channel. Uh, let's get started. Let me start sharing my screen. Okay, let's go. All right. So Disney. So what's all this hype with Disney? And why do I believe it's a $1 trillion company? Now, I do have all the in-depth details on the video. Again, that you will see a little pop-up link and go over there if you want to watch the whole thing. But overall, just to kind of go over a, a basic uh, understanding of, of what's going on, uh, Disney is now uh, a growth company, in my opinion, in my eyes. Um, and yesterday, uh, actually Friday, let me see, go over the investor relations website. On Friday, um, they uh, had the announcement based on the investors, investors, uh, um, you could say um, investors day, that they were gonna pretty much, well actually here's the, here's the news, just so you guys could see it. So pretty much this was reported uh, December 10th, the Walt Disney Company surpasses 137 million paid subscribers across direct to consumer. We're talking about uh, Disney Plus, Hulu, and ESPN Plus, shattering previous guidance, increased pay subscriptions target to 300 to 350 million subscribers by 2024, uh, which is huge, 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 huge. So that caused a humongous amount of volume in Disney yesterday, uh, nine times the average volume, 100, it was 87. Now you can see over here, there's a volume right here. 87, oh, a little bit over 87 million shares were traded uh, on Friday. On the bullish side, um, and overall, analyst upgrades everywhere. It uh, pretty much because of that kind of volume and how it, it, the stock broke out, and again, it also broke out over 52 week high, which is very, very bullish. Uh, overall, it's a great long term investment, but also a high probability day trade, second day trade, second day move, or low hanging fruit. So the way I traded it, and again, this is based on the volume, the news, and the, and the Friday's price action. If you look at Friday's price action, it was the same, same move. So for me, the day two type of trade are, are always the easiest. I have a high probability trade. So the way I was looking at it is coming into the morning, um, there was, of course, some, some bottom information here pre-market, and the, the midpoint was right here. And that's usually what I get in. And I actually did get in in the midpoint, but I didn't get in right away at the open because I was looking at outer lines and I was, I was looking at the market. And let me show you the market. The market had a pretty huge gap. And I felt that maybe the market could kind of like wash out and then maybe trend. Uh, that was my initial thought. So I wasn't sure if buying Disney at the open, the midpoint was going to be the right idea. Uh, but that was something I, of course, had in mind, and that's usually what I have in mind. Um, I was thinking that maybe we'll test 1750, even 170 to get in. But when I noticed that it was kind of holding this level, uh, it was kind of holding above the 1750s, and it kind of started to trend. And it was it was actually after the open, I felt that hey. I think uh, Disney could kind of squeeze out if it breaks above the midpoint and try and maybe go to a red or green move. So I did enter uh, at the midpoint. And, and the, the reason why I thought this, uh, the reason why I thought there was this, this kind of a move was going to happen was because of what happened on Friday. And this is what, what it, it becomes very important, guys, to understand the character of each individual stock because every single stock is a little bit different. It treats a little bit different. Uh, based on the <clears throat> the float size, the, the short percentage, uh, the the amount of volume. So uh, what I do is I always look at how the stock reacted the day before in terms of the moves. And if you notice, 
at the open on Friday, it actually had a very similar move. <clears throat> it actually um, had this, the week open, week open, and squeeze uh, above the volume weighted average price, which is this uh, purple line, trend line, and it literally just kind of off the races, literally just kept trending. So that was pretty much the reason why I decided to, to go along here on on uh, on Disney after it broke out the the uh, midpoint, so and it pretty much did that. It pretty much did the similar type of move that, that it did on Friday. So week open kind of held, uh, and it literally just broke above the volume weighted average price and just kept trending, and it went uh, red or green. So the reason why I decided to sell in the one seventy sevens because sometimes it doesn't usually break red or green. It's because of the range. So I felt that because of Friday it had such a big range that I think breaking above uh, the, the uh, red or green line, which is 175 seventies and going to 177 was very doable, very possible. Uh, so if you look at uh, Friday's range, I mean, this was a huge range, you know, all the way from 166 to 179. Uh, we're talking over 10 points, you know, uh, like nine points, you know, I will actually, yeah, over 10 points, more like uh, 11 points. So to me, I felt like, okay, it's definitely doable that this team could keep going, even maybe test 178. Uh, but I did have my target at 177s. Uh, so again, bought at the, the midpoint uh, after, again, after this week open, and, and it didn't, uh, of course, get a chance to test the 171.50s. That was the next line that I was looking at. And it was starting to grind up, and I felt like, hey, we might have a similar move to Friday's uh, move. And that's the reason why I got in at the midpoint. And I exited actually exactly in my target. So that was a pretty a pretty nice trade. Um, definitely uh, something that doesn't happen every day. It's never always this easy. Uh, sometimes it is, guys. Sometimes it's not. Uh, and today was one of those days. So I was very, very happy with today's trade. Again, similar price action to Friday. Um, now it did sell off after it kind of hit my target. So uh, that was just a lock of the draw, man. I got on exactly the point where we're going to start reversing. So, and one thing that I've noticed in terms of uh, low hanging fruit on the long side, usually my trades work out uh, during the first hour of the day before zombie hours, which zombie hours are after the first hour of the market. So if I'm trading uh, central, which market opens at 830, zombie hours will be after 930. So if the trade does not work before 9.30, I usually am out. <laughs> you know, I'm out on, on, my, on my long side of the trades for day trades. Um, so that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I, uh, give me a second. I hope you guys learned something from this video. Again, highly recommend you guys watch my video. Uh, I, again, I have a link up top where it kind of talks about why I personally believe this is going to be the next $1 trillion company. Uh, there's a lot of detail into it. It goes over into the uh, Investor's Day's um, uh, a video that they, they, they had uh, the Disney uh, covered on last, last week. Uh, and also the content they're going to create, the strategy. Uh, they are going to increase actually prices next year. But actually one thing that I wanted to talk about that I didn't really talk, how to get a chance to talk about in that video is that they're doing this bundle. So right now, uh, Disney uh, has uh, Disney Plus. ESPN and Hulu, all direct to consumer uh, platforms. So right now there's 86, over 86 million uh, subscribers in Disney Plus, around over 38 million subscribers in Hulu and over 10 million subscribers in ESPN. So I believe their strategy to hit those numbers, those 300 or 250 million subscribers, the bundles, the bundles, especially in the US, that's gonna make a huge difference. Uh, so the way they're gonna do it is, uh, because me personally, I'm currently subscribed at Hulu and uh, Disney Plus, but don't have a bundle right now because if I do add, add the bundle to get all three of them, um, I'm going to start watching commercials for Hulu. But they're going to change that in May, January. So in January, starting January, now they're going to have the bundle where you get Hulu, ESPN, and Disney Plus all for a very reasonable price with no commercials. And that's what I'm interested in. Uh, and the great thing about ESPN is that once, uh, you know, of course, we're expecting that this vaccine to kind of work. Once things start to open up, we're going to have more live sports, uh, more games for people to watch. And me personally, I am very interested to kind of see those games on ESPN+. Plus. 
Um, so if you think about it, if at least 50% of the people sign up for that bundle, you know, if, if at least 50% of the people who already currently own Disney Plus uh, sign up for that bundle, you know, we're talking about over 40 million uh, subscribers. So right now there's only 10 million subscribers on ESPN Plus. So imagine ESPN uh, Plus having another 30 million or more, 40 million more subscribers. Uh, just again, all based on US consumers. Again, if this is majority just US, uh, but again, we still have the rest of the world, you know, to, to kind of, um, you know, take advantage of Disney services. So I really think overall in the next three to five years, we're going to hit those 300 to 350 million direct to consumer subscribers, uh, you know, for sure. So uh, again, don't forget, uh, actually, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to uh, ask them down below in the YouTube comments. Again, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel. You guys will hear from me soon. Have a good one, guys. Take care.